Okay, we're now recording. So this is the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, August 27th, 2020. It's a virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order and pursuant to current state orders related to public meetings. This meeting is being recorded and later made available on the town's website for viewing. And now our chairman, Dan Silbo. Hello. Um, well, first of all, we have got public comments and I see no one from the public. Do we have anybody? I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone that's come in. Uh, if they come in later, we can always uh, add it to it. Um, so the next uh, agenda item is minutes from June 25th, 2020. Does anybody have any corrections or comments or? I move to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Is and that course, Mike and Tom? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And of course, the July meeting was canceled. Um, all right, monthly report for June 2020 and July 2020. Let me see if I can find that. All right, let's see here. Kathy, did that Mill Woods, the um, 8,000 visitors, is that some kind of record? Uh, no, we've obviously done more with um, <clears throat> in the uh, years past. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's just one pool being open. We actually, um, I can give you, if you'd like, the updated numbers. For Mill Woods for the summer, we, when we closed, we did 9,648 uh, wow. people coming to the pool. Wow. And just to put it in perspective, <clears throat> the previous year, Mill Woods had 11,481 and Willard had 12,179. I looked it up, I wanted to see how we did. But I think that's pretty good considering everything that's going on. That and, you, and you were closed for a period of time as well. And we didn't open on. until June, tw yeah, we did right. close. Right. Thank you, you so that? much for keeping it open an extra week, Kathy. That was really nice. Yeah, I, I was talking to Kathy before the meeting and I was stopped two or three times just in our neighborhood yeah. with people thanking, you know, we had uh, certainly the board had talked about it mm -hmm. last year and uh, my neighbors were happy. So <laughs> that was good. And I had several people say the same thing to me. They were really it's, you know, for a lot of us, it was a staycation kind of year. And so that was like the, just being able to get some relief. It was such a hot summer. So it was really, really appreciated. Mm -hmm. And part of that we were able to do because we were closed for the storm. So some of that budget money we were, that helped us extend the week okay. because we didn't get that money from council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. Um, I got a question for you. Financially, how did you do? Because I, I know, uh, oh, because I know some people, obviously, the, what, what was the pool uh, pass usually? $55? Was it? How much was it? 30. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. As you know, no, we didn't sell any pool pay. <clears throat> yeah. But some people paid a lot more than that because they were going $5 a block, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. So I was just wondering how we did. In terms of dollars, we took in... 16,565. Six, 16, mm -hmm. So considering we weren't even sure we were gonna bring anything in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now if you went to an average year when we have both pools open, uh, prior, to, prior to last summer, so if you looked at that, we took in 45,000 for the outdoor pool. Okay. N now last summer, at first it drove us nuts because when the when when we did all the records, we took in seventy-two thousand dollars for the outdoor pool. But that was the year that we raised the pool pass fee. We sold a lot more pool passes and we also did the year round pass. And mm -hmm. it was another okay. 
hot summer too. So there was a lot of different things that entered into it. So if you look at the 45,000 as an average, and that had pool passes in it, 16, we did, we did reach a lot of people. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. It's yeah. probably all the money we took in. We took in a little more money this summer, but not a whole lot. Were the operating expenses like half? Were they literally half or not? Well, well, what happened was they were, <clears throat> they were half because one pool was open. Mm -hmm. They were probably this, uh, this, a little bit more than what one pool would have cost us because we had to put a few more staff on yeah. it. And council um, only gave us the funds for one pool. So it wasn't like we saved money. We literally didn't get the money mm -hmm. for the second pool. Yeah, but that didn't seem, I, I think it went fairly well considering all the uh, circumstances involved. Yeah, I have to really commend all the staff because um, from the staff uh, here in the office with Rachel and Mary working on the pool, and then all the pool staff and everybody coming together. Uh, they came up with the plan, researched it, put it in place. And I think if Mary, correct me, I think of the one, probably the one little change we made is when we started out, you were able to do, we were able to do 40 uh, family site, 42 family 42. sites. 42. Mm -hmm. And then when we kind of got going, and the pool staff said to us, well, the, kind of, the pool seems kind of empty. It didn't seem full. And we evaluated that and we moved to 53. 53 spots. So we were watching it as we went along. And again, staff did a really good job with that. Good, very good. I also Mary. want to comment on the cleanliness. Mm -hmm. The um, staff at Millwoods kept it very, very clean. It's the cleanest I've ever seen. The bathhouse, the bathrooms, the grounds. I know we have goose poo problems. No goose poo. Um, it was really, really clean this year. And several people commented on that too. So I thought I would share that. And that's great to hear because we did, as you know, we closed and had special times to clean. And uh, we did hear a lot of that, that people noticed that. We also, as part of the, um, the process, they also increased the amount of chlorine that we put in the pond this year. So, so we also heard that it was, uh, it, it was uh, clearer. The water yes, was clearer. it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, when my so, brother was in charge of the maintenance of the pools, he used to put extra chlorine in. They used to yell at him at the end of the year, but he's like, you don't understand. It's because the other thing is, uh, the critters that are in the bottom of the pool, you can tell if there's enough chlorine in the water if the critters are washing up on the shore. Oh. The chlorine's killing them. Um, it, when there's not enough chlorine in the water, there's no critters on the edge of the pool. So you could tell just by that uh, if there's enough chlorine in the water. <clears throat> Kathy, is the high school going to open their pool? We're, we're, we're waiting to hear whether or not it'll be open for Parks and Rec. They are getting it ready for the girls, the high school swim team. Um, and we're just waiting to hear how all that's going to play out. Okay. But every time I told Mary this today, every time I see somebody, I'm like not bothering the superintendent because I know he's busy. But every once in a while, I'll mention, I know we have to wait, but we'd be interested in opening the pool in some fashion. And our priority would be the Saturday swim lessons. That would be what we'd like to get up. And uh, the Barracuda swim team, if we could. Again, we have to watch and see how all this is going to play out. Mm -hmm. First with the high school swim team. Because we know they're going to probably have to take more time. Because we think they have to spread out more. So it's sort of a preliminary work in progress. Thank you. We do know we probably won't have the early morning swim because they're trying, they're, they're trying, the schools are keeping during the school day um, 
uh, no one, no one else coming in, but also all, there's no park and rec programs after school. Actually, there's pretty much nothing going on after school at right now. That may change as we go along, but right now we're not in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, letters and announcements. We got an updated advisory board list. Yep. Some of your terms were renewed. Yep. Very good. Looks like everybody stayed. Yeah, it's nice. Have you heard from Stoffy at all? No. No, I don't hear from him. Because I ran into him once at the grocery store and I said, you know, you got to start coming. All right. Well, it's good. We always have a quorum. Yeah. That's good. And I see Colleen got renewed. That's good. That was good. So it's nice to see you guys are interested in staying. Yeah. Very good. Um, old business, Millwood's Pond. We talked about that. I don't yeah. know if there's anything else to say. I think we killed that. Um, new business, fall program. I just wanted to give you an overview of what we're looking at doing. Uh, because we're not, obviously, we're not in the schools yet, so that means no keen after-school programs um, uh, right now. And uh, as I said, they're going to they're going to continue to evaluate that as the school year goes along and see what that means. So what we're doing is we're using the community center sort of as our place to be, and we're putting um, we're doing our fitness classes, and with our fitness classes, we're looking at off, we are going to offer them both in person and virtual. So you have the choice to sign up for either. And with the in person, unfortunately, with the spacing we have to do, we can only do 12 in person, just because you have to space out with social distancing mm -hmm. a certain amount of time. Yeah. And so we're doing it both ways so that in case something spikes and we have to close for a while, they can kind of go right over to the Zoom and we don't have to do refunds. That's, that's our key looking at how can, we, how can we still stay in business and do it that way. So that's what we're looking at. We've moved our karate program that used to be in the middle school is going over to the community center. Um, we're looking to see if people are gonna sign up. We're gonna try and do our preschool program, but that's uh, we have to wait and see if people are gonna be interested in signing up for that. And um, our gymnastics program, last year we did it at the middle school and we uh, contracted with the pr a private gym in Newington to do all the teaching. So this year we're gonna open the program but hold it at the, um, at the private gym in Newington because they can do all the cleaning and everything and take care of all the social distancing and we're not in the school anyways. So that makes it pretty good for us that way. What's the name of the program? Or the, what's the name of the gym? Oh. I think Mary knows, maybe. Aerial Gymnastics. Oh, OK. All right, cool. Um, and um, it's interesting. So I talked about those programs. We already talked about the high school pool. We're going to wait and see. Um, the. Let's see, what else we got going on? The senior citizen programs are gonna all start out virtual. We're not ready to open the senior center yet. Even though it's come out that you could open senior centers September 1st, but you have to follow all these things. And oh, by the way, we don't want anybody 65 and older because they're at risk. So, so it makes it a little difficult. <laughs> And we, we want to be very cautious with that. We're currently doing the um, grab and go lunch program for the seniors out of the community center. We're going to look at the potential of doing some of the medical programs that are one on one where a clinician comes in, whether it's um, it, checking your feet or um, blood pressure or things like that. We're looking to see those. 
the uh, computer center for the senior center has been doing everything virtual. So they're going to continue doing that. So we're looking to be very cautious with the senior center. And we're looking at the community center and we're trying and we're plotting out who's going to be in the building at what time. And we're also plotting out the cleaning times we'll need. This isn't going to be a community center where there are back to back to back activities. We can't do that anymore. So we're looking at um, like we're going to be using the gymnasium for fitness. Um, when the seniors get back into the swing of things, we're going to sort of look at them in the banquet room and the fireside room. And then the West Wing, we, we're looking for some of our youth programs as they get up and go. So that's kind of a quick snapshot of what we're looking at. Did I miss anything, Mary? I was just going to type you a chat. Uh, the therapeutic recreation program. Oh. Thanks. Um, the therapeutic recreation program is an after school program that's always held at the community center. And um, talking with the school superintendent, because they usually do transportation for us for the students to bring them to the community center. And speaking with him, they want to see the program continue too, because you want to you want to engage the special needs students. So we will be doing that program also. And while I'm talking about that, we, um, we've had an, a vacancy for our therapeutic recreation supervisor, and we've made an offer and we're waiting for all the paperwork to clear and everything, and then we'll be able to announce a new supervisor. So hopefully we'll have that individual on board um, in time to start with the programs for this year. I'm talking way too much here. Oh. But just giving you guys, uh, again, just a snapshot. And our registration dates are September 16th. We pushed everything out a little bit. And well, that'll be the resident start date. Um, our brochure will come out, only it's going to be digital this year. We're not going with the rear reminder because things are changing every day. So we're going to just look at ways to blast it out that it's coming out. And um, for instance, if it comes out, and we're hoping it's coming out the week of uh, Labor Day, so the week of September 8th uh, is kind of our target date. So, um, so if things change, we'll be able to go in if we have to add a class, cancel a class, do something, we'll be able to do it all uh, online and be able to respond a lot quicker. And one of our goals is not to have to do a lot of refunds, which is what we did pretty much April through June was mm -hmm. refunding programs. All right. Very good. Um, field use, how did the... Well, it's been, well, I'm sure you've all followed the CIAC stuff. That's just mm -hmm. um, a nightmare. Is that a good way to, mm -hmm. to put it? Yeah. Whether or not they're going to be so good about keeping the kids in cohorts in school and then they're all going to play together in sports. But <clears throat> what we're looking at is um, each day it is changing, but now the high school is going to start practice this weekend with everything now, with the potential of conditioning for about two weeks and then um, put some type of uh, team practices, they think after that with, with games maybe starting the beginning of October. And so the high school is going to be using all their regular fields. So that's all ready to go. And then for youth sports, um, Eagles Youth Football has been conditioning and they're, they're looking to go. Um, uh, uh, Richie Soccer, the travel portion, is looking to go. They um, canceled the rec side of it, and they're doing just the travel portion. We just found out today that field hockey is now a go. They weren't sure if they were going to go or not. Little League, which did have baseball and softball in the summer, is also looking to do fall baseball and softball. So right now, that's uh, th those are on to go. And... Um, did I mention field hockey just got to us today and they're coming. 
So the only thing we haven't heard from is the middle school flag football. They weren't sure whether or not they were going to go or not. Okay. Very good. My, um, my son's refereeing soccer. They contacted him. So he goes wherever, all over these towns. But Berlin contacted him and told him um, none of the players have to wear, wear a mask. But he has to wear a mask. And I said, well, how, how are you going to blow the whistle if you couldn't wear a mask? <laughs> so it's kind of like the world upside down. It's very strange. I, yeah, it's, it was like the lifeguards. You couldn't wear a mask when you were up on the chair because you had to blow your whistle. Yeah. So. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. It's uh, a little odd. All right. Um, state grant for Spring Street. Yeah, I wanted to give you a, um, a heads up. The, um, if some of you that have been on the board for a while, you may be aware that we have a Beaver Brook master plan, which is um, Spring Street. And it's the, the brook there is called Beaver Brook. And it, it runs almost from behind the, well, it runs pretty far, but there are pieces of land that the town owns from Beaver Brook all the way, excuse me, from the police station, behind the police station, all the way down to Main Street, and then you hit Spring Street Pond, and then the other side of the pond is that wetlands area. Mm -hmm. So so the Spring Street Pond, you've probably noticed the, um, the water always goes over the road, the bank is eroded, the dam really isn't in good shape. And for whatever reason, the town got a grant from the bond, the town, the uh, state bond commission, to and I'm actually going to read it. It's for the it's for the renovation of the eroded Spring Street Dam to limit the overflow and upgrade the area around the dam to support an expanded area of passive recreation, which is our master plan, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. And now here's the clincher: we got a million dollars. Wow. I know, right? What are you going to do with a million dollars there? Well, we could spend a lot of, well, they do have to really work on the dam and do a lot of that cleanup and stuff. And so, so technically it'll be an engineering project, but obviously we're going to be working with them. The, the, oh, I forgot to look at the date of the master plan. The master plan is, I got to pull all the maps out of my, um, out of storage so I can look at everything. So, um, and what it was, what our plan looked at was cleaning up that whole area, getting rid of all the invasives, potentially in the Spring Street Pond area, cleaning up around the pond and making it much more attractive uh, with maybe a walking trail uh, and an overlook. I mean, we had some, and some signage and, um, and they have to do the engineering piece, which is all the water control stuff. But it's um, it's it's a plan of passive recreation, and even in that wetland areas that's beyond the pond, there there was a plan to do a boardwalk to walk in there and stuff. Now this is this is probably man, maybe t twelve or fifteen years old. I can't believe I didn't look up the date. But it will have to be looked at and revised. But mm -hmm. it may be something we'll be talking about in the kind of the near future as to what uh, what will happen there. And it's interesting because I've been communicating by email with a gentleman that lives in the condos across the street who said, wouldn't it be great to clean this area up, make it really pretty? And I would tell him, it's on our list, but we just don't have any funds. So mm -hmm. now I have to email him to let him know we have some funds. Oh, that's exciting. It's going to yeah. be great. Yeah. Might be enough money for a boat launch, too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Well, all the little critters will probably be happy to live there. But they're going to look at that whole area because it does always flood. So, yeah, it'll be interesting because one of the suggestions, if you could picture the area that has the triangle piece in the middle, the road by the pond is on one side and then the road is on the other side too. And maybe they only make one road and eliminate the road by the pond. 
Mm -hmm. and make the other side wider. I don't really know, but there's a lot of ideas floating around just to kind of make it like a, a park that you would walk to, not a park that you would drive through. Yeah. That something like that, that it could be even prettier than it is now. Is mm -hmm. that money, Kathy, the town has to appropriate first, you get reimbursed or that's up front? No, that's uh, from the state bond commission. Okay. Cool. Oh. That's the yeah. pond that we do the fishing derby at, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry? The, oh, the fishing derby, that's where we have the fishing derby? Yes. Mm -hmm. And do is there ice skating there, or is that yeah. just it freezes quickly and people ice skate on it? There is. We officially have ice skating on it, when it, but we haven't, unfortunately, it hasn't been cold enough for us to officially open it. But we know kids go there every winter. But if they clean it up and everything, it might freeze faster. I don't know. Oh, oh that's but, exciting. Yeah, we could put benches, you know, when you're ice skating. You know? Yeah. We could have some fun designing. <laughs> you know, I, I told the town engineer, Derek, I could spend a million dollars. That was no problem. Because we laughed because we, we didn't even, it wasn't something that would have ever been at the top of our list. But we got it, so you want to do it. And I know they've been looking at it because of the... Um, the flooding there. So that that's been a that's always been a concern. But I think it uh, helps a lot that you had a plan. You know, even if you're not following the plan, you had a plan. Yeah. Somebody comes to you. We have a plan, and this is what we want done, and you can talk from there. That's kind of one of the problems we're facing with the farm committee. Is uh, the most important part of the farm committee is to get the money up front to do the plan. It's not so much doing anything in the plan yet. It's doing a plan and then you get people that say they want to do something for you. So we're running I'm, gonna, I'm just going to grab one of the maps. Okay. Yeah. I thought the camera might pick this up, but I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it. But we've got boards like this that sort of identify. I know you can't see it. When we get together in person, I'll bring them. But this is a whole of the whole long length of it that goes along behind. It parallels the Silestine Highway, but it's the brook that goes behind all the businesses. Mm -hmm. We don't own all of it, but we own some of it. So when we get together, I'll be able to show you. But I kept them, so we got them. Good. Is that plan available online, the town website? I think it is, Tom. It might be. If it isn't, I'll um, see if they can't put it up. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been on the board, I, I want to say close to 10 years. And of course, I don't have the best memory, but I don't recall ever hearing about that master plan. That, you know, the brook goes by across the street from where my office is and, uh, I'm familiar with a, a lot of it from one end to the other, but uh, it's nice to hear that they've got something in, in place. Yeah, and I actually have a report that was done too. And I can, I can um, see how we can, I, I, get, I don't have it electronic, it's that old, I don't have it electronically. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it, it'll be, we won't get started right away on it. Engineering's got a couple other projects ahead of it, but it's certainly something. Is, um, is, there a, is there a deadline on when the grant money has to be spent, Kathy? We don't know yet. None of the paperwork has come out okay. that I'm aware of. Um, there usually is that you have to do spend the money within yeah. a certain period of time. Right. Who put in for it? Because one of our uh, reps or senators had to put in for it, right? Yeah, I'm not, I, I, I don't know that piece. I, I happened by chance to be reading, I don't even know why, the state bond agenda one day. And it was on there and I'm like, I must be reading something. Because I <laughs> always look for Weathersfield and see what you got. And we also got, they got, they had previously got, they, we have funds to renovate um, oh, nuts, the street by the state labor department. Jordan Lane Boulevard. That Follybrook. Follybrook. Yeah. Is it Follybrook? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Wilkin Hill Road. 
Well, Wilkett Hill Road. It's Wilkett Hill Road. The Department of Corrections. Corrections. Oh, I was in the wrong place. Department <laughs> of Corrections. So they have to redo the road. The town already got a grant from the state to redo the road from um, Jordan through Weathersfield going towards Hartford and a little bit into Hartford. Okay. And so in this this next round, they got money to put uh, to upgrade the the street lighting on that street. So that was along with, so we got 500,000, 500,000 to upgrade the street lighting and a million to do the Spring Street Dam area. So that was pretty good. Yeah. Hey. But then I have to add to that, Dan, if I might, as a another agenda item for new businesses, um, <clears throat> I love our engineering department because they know when the state is putting out for different projects that might be funded and they always ask if we have any projects or anything and staff gets together and talks about it. And if you all remember the Putnam Bridge was built with a uh, bike uh, bikeway on it or a walking trail and they did that as part of the bridge but they never did the connections for Glastonbury and Weathersfield to be able to get off, to get on it and off it um, from the um, from each town. And recently they got grant funding, the state got grant funding to go ahead and do that at both ends where they literally will be creating the entrance to the bike trail on both the Weathersfield and um, Glastonbury side. Oh. So that was already in the works. And I think, I, Glastonbury, you got the same, right, Mike? I believe. Yeah, I believe so. Our, ours was, I think, uh, much more costly. There's yeah, yeah, you farther away like, and there's a lot of wetlands involved, yeah. Yeah, you're like four million or something. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. We're like a million just to get off of the bridge and onto a, a town road or a state road. So recently, <clears throat> Yeah, I think before, yeah, just recently, because I didn't have it for the agenda, we submitted a plan. To, okay, so once you get off the bridge, so now they've made the connection off the bridge to Great Meadow Road. If you can picture that area where the, um, yeah. the restaurant is. Yeah. Putnam Park. So, so, they, so the engineering department um, knew that our bike trail goes along Great Meadow Road because it goes into the um, the meadows and it goes over to um, to the cove by way of kind of Hart Street, the little street that is um, mm -hmm. as you go down uh, Main Street and you're going to the cove, there's a little street uh, past State Street, you're still going down Main and there's a little, there's a right-hand turn that takes you out to the I-91 entrance and stuff. So that, that period, that space from the Great Meadow Road to Hart Street, they created, the, the engineering did a plan to upgrade the bike trail so that it'd be more visible, you could tell and everything. And they submitted that and they got a grant to do that for $720,000. So as I said, just for Parks and Rec, the engineering department's going to be busy. Wow. But, and then there's another plan to take it further into the Cove and Cove Park and improve the trails, but we didn't get funded for that. But we can't be greedy. Now, is Bike Walk Weathersfield part of, have they been involved with the uh, bike? Yes, they, they've been involved in this planning. And this was one of the priorities. Well, it wasn't not so much a priority, but they talked about it because everybody had been working very hard to get the state to do the connection to come off the bridge because that was a lot of money. And now um, this will begin to start the process of connecting it up to the bike trail. So it's kind of cool that we have some money coming in for different things. But engineering also has a few roads to build, so this won't be right at the top of their list. But um, but we have a great town engineer, and he's really good at at managing his projects and getting things done. So uh, he's been very helpful with us to look at stuff. So that was um, 
that was just, I wanted to get that grant in too. Great. All right. Um, Selman Wells House, there hasn't been any activity, Kathy? No, because the house is so small, we can't do social distancing in it yet. Mm -hmm. It's just not big enough to handle um, the indoor crowd you can do is 25 and we can't do that spacing inside yet. Yeah, but, I mean, you still have the farmer's market. If, uh, if somebody wanted to do something outside, would that be an issue or not? Well, it, it comes to the bathroom mm -hmm. and whether, how that would work, how we do that would be, we'd have to think it through because okay. we have a portalette for the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, I see a farm committee. I missed the last meeting. It was my daughter's birthday, and oh. uh, but I heard, you know, through the grapevine that we did not get the money yet for the uh, fifty. It, it's uh, fifty-five thousand dollars to draw up a plan, and what that would uh, encompass is uh, a lot of community input, what the community wants there. And then they draw up a plan from that. And they would take everything into account, including traffic flow patterns and parking and everything you can think of. Um, that's really what the, the plan would be. But uh, things are kind of on hold right now. Um, I would like to try to get a hold of Mike Rell and just talk to him and see if we can, like I said, get a plan. You don't have to do anything, but I think we have a plan. Then you can go after state grants and different things like that. Um, but with no plan, it's kind of tough to get anything done. So certainly if any of uh, you, know, you guys see Mike around town or maybe just put a bug in his ear, say, look, let's try to get the, the money for the plan. And then, you know, from there, whatever happens, happens, but at least we'll have something to go with down the road. Um, so that's it, that's the update on the Casilla Farm. Um, Board member comments. Any comments? Yeah, I um, just following up on the um, 1860 reservoir with the discussion we had at the last meeting. Um, the, the concerns that were raised. There was a something about a, the lock that wasn't working or something. I assume that's been corrected so you can lock yes. the gate. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um, there was an issue with signage. Whether there was signage out there to let people know what could go on and what couldn't go on. I'm, I'm not sure if that. What was somebody who's going to check either there were signs or weren't signs I wasn't clear on that. Uh, I'm going to have to double check the signs, Mike. I'm not. I was just there too, and I was I looked at them, and they didn't. They they seemed okay to me, but let me let me double check them. Okay, and then the the only other item was um, the concern of notifying the residents when that reservoir might get treated just as a courtesy. I think it might not be a bad idea. Yeah. I don't know. I, I assume they're going to treat it again, potentially, but it's just, I think, a good um, public relations thing to let people know when something's being done there. And I did pass that on to physical services. They're the department that hand, that that does all that work, gets all that set up. So I let them know that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? I, I do have one thing for Kathy. I was uh, just wondering if you heard anything more about the bridge at Mill Woods. If, uh, if we heard yeah, anything. They haven't, they haven't touched base with me. Okay. Um, I did, no, not since I last um, talked to you about it. All right. But I can, I can check in with them. Yeah, it's Lee Stanton, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be nice. Yeah, because I did let them know we had the funds. We have, we have, uh, I believe, either eighteen or twenty thousand set aside in CIP for it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would help them get to the um, to work to their budget. Yeah. But I'll I'll give them a call. Okay. And, and two two more quick ones. The um, Keen Carnival. I assume that that's not probably happening. That is correct. Pretty much all the special events right now for um, the town are canceled. So the 9-11 picnic, 
Bikini Carnival, uh, Mikey's Road Race. We just got word that the Historical Society canceled their craft fair. Uh, the Corn Fest wasn't going to happen anyways this year, so kind of worked out well. Um, and the only two things right now that are on the books as pending is October 11th is the, um, they do a car show down at the Cove mm -hmm. through the um, cadets at the police department. And we're reviewing that one. And there's also a road race in November, Jamie's run at the beginning of November. And that's also being reviewed because we've canceled all the road races to date. And um, again, those two, we don't know yet. And the muster that was planned, I forgot when that was, is that? That was supposed to be for the summer and they were, they did cancel it and they were looking at potentially moving it to next summer. Okay. But they didn't want to get too far ahead depending on what was going on. All right. If I could bring up one thing on the uh, reservoir. I wanted to look, if that's okay, Dan. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I met with a uh, scout who had uh, an idea for an Eagle Scout project at the reservoir. And I told him I would run it by you just to get your feedback. Um, I think it's okay. What, what he's looking to do is for his Eagle Scout project, he said he goes there all the time. He fishes there, he lives in the neighborhood and there's no place to sit down. And he wanted to know if he could create in one area of the park, if he could clear the area without, clear the undergrowth, leave all the trees and raise funds to buy two picnic tables and create a little picnic area and, and make a path from the current path that goes to the picnic area. And this area is like in a, it's in a little open area that sort of close to the water, but not, it's not like you could jump in it. You know, the water's there, but there's uh, trees and stuff that hide it a little bit, but he wants to create a little picnic area. Now I did bring to his attention that that area of the park has a tendency on occasion to get vandalized or people like to throw things in the water or other stuff could happen. So if he chose to do that, the picnic tables might get written on and vandalized that could happen. And we wanted we, to be careful. We didn't create a nice area for the kids to have a keg party either. So I said all this to him and I said, as long as you, you're willing, you gotta think about the risk that if any of this stuff happens, we may paint the tables maybe three seasons, but the fourth season we might take them away. So he was good with all that because he, he really was interested in doing it at the, at the reservoir. And we had our, in. Our engineering staff come out to make sure we're not in any wetlands areas that we don't have to get permitted for it and we're not. So I just thought I'd bring it up to you just to kind of make you aware of it. And I told him I would just get your feedback too. Um, just, I always like to encourage the scout projects and um, he's so enthusiastic about it and wanting to do it. I think it's worth a try. No, I, I like it and I about everybody else. I think everyone is in agreement, right? Yep. It, it sounds good. I haven't been there in a while. It makes me think that maybe I should take a trip up there to uh, rehash some old memories. I, I don't recall seeing many adults there. The keg parties, I don't know if we had those, but there were gatherings where we would have loved picnic tables to sit on. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if it's frequented a bit where fishermen or people go for nature strolls, it, it sounds great. Well, you're going to laugh because when I drove there, uh, I met him there Monday and um, I drove there and as I'm starting to go in, I can see that there's a car coming out. So I wait, the car comes out, then I'm getting ready to go in, a truck comes out. I'm like, what's going on? I mean, it's the middle of the day. It's not like, and then um, I meet the, the town engineer is inside waiting for me to get there and he goes, I think there's another car coming out. You better wait. <laughs> I said, I'm just parking it here and we'll walk in, you know, but people were using it and it's, you know, if it's used properly, it's a nice little area. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do we need to, we don't need a formal motion on this. No, okay. I just wanted to make you aware of it, right. just um, in case you hear about it. We're, I think we should give it a shot. Yep. If he's willing, because he's got to get scouts to help him clean it up and everything. Mm -hmm. And part of me is thinking, if he cleans it up, maybe he'll talk to his friends that they always keep it clean. You know, it's worth a shot. Yeah. And that's, um, the other thing is uh, the farm committee wanted to make sure I had a connection to the scouts in case something did come up. So I'm glad you're in contact with these people. That's very good. We need a connection. Um, any other comments? No? And I have a few connections with the Boy Scouts and the um, Eagle Scouts and stuff too. So good. It, um, if anything comes up, we had an Eagle Scout um, just last week put in a Gaga ball pit at Emerson Williams as his project. The PTO bought the Gaga ball pit, but he and his crew like leveled the land and built the structure um, and that just went up on Sunday. So um, I know that there were a few Eagle Scouts on his team of workers and I'm sure that he's going to be involved in the, the Eagle Scouts for a good, good amount of time to come. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And Weathersfield has a history of um, granting a lot of eagles of, I don't know what it's called, but there's a lot of scouts that achieve the rank of Eagle Scout in Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Um, we're in the Harbor Management Commission now. Going, Mike, can you give us the uh, Harbor Management Report? Oh, I was going to try. And Tom, I did try to unmute him. I, I can't unmute. Oh, wait, I got a chat coming in. Up. Would you like me to try to call him and have him on speakerphone, or I don't know what to say. Yeah, if we could, yeah. I'm trying. Let me give it a shot. You never know. Did you guys? I I did email you his harbor man and his harbor master report today. Yes. Yes. Mike, you want to try being on speakerphone and I'll put it up uh, to the computer? They, they'd love to hear from me. All right, let's give this a shot. Okay. Make sure the volume's all the way up. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not working. Tom, could he tell you some highlights? What's that? Could he give you some highlights? Okay. Mike? Um, can you give some highlights? Yeah. So anything that's not in the um, Harbor Master Report? Do you have anything to, that you'd like to uh, tell the board um, that isn't in the Harbor Master Report? Yeah, those damn fishermen on the docks, I hear you. All right. He, uh, Mike says there's not a lot to report other than what's in the report here and um, other than you know the fishermen are a little frustrating to keep off the docks. He tries to instruct them but they have a mind of their own. And Kathy, what's the status of the boat? Um, the boat is is going out tomorrow to a different company, a different uh, boat um, repair place to get uh, evaluated because we brought it back from a, a boat repair place. And when they put it in the water, there were still problems with it. And unfortunately, that boat company isn't returning any of our calls. So tomorrow it's going to a different place to be evaluated. And it's recommended the fire department uses this company okay. for, their, for their fire boat. So we're bringing it there tomorrow and getting it, figuring out what's going on with it. Okay. 
And mm -hmm. Mike might know exactly what's wrong with it. Frustrating, huh, Mike? Frustrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they were talking about putting it on the Spring Street uh, pond there to <laughs> test it out. <laughs> That'd be Any pretty place is better than no place, right? No oh point. Um, I guess that's it. We got nothing else. Anybody have any other comments or questions or anything else? Well, if nobody has any comments, I would be happy to motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. All right. We'll see you guys next month. Good to see y'all. Yeah. Look forward to seeing all of you in person soon, hopefully. <laughs> Yep. Thank you. We're going to work on that. Take it easy, everybody. Yep. Good night. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Thanks. Good night, Mike. Good night. Thanks for... All right, Mike. We'll catch up with you soon.